go. <clears throat> um, welcome everybody to the latest Zoom call. I have a feeling I'm going to regret this. Um, as you can probably see, we have the two Mullins brothers and Mad McNair, every, as, as known by everybody. <laughs> this was a meeting that was supposed to have taken place a couple of weeks ago. It didn't happen. We had Rab on um, with a couple of other guests, uh, with Kevin Boothby and Pat Rosney. And uh, he managed to lose the signal, which I suspect was um, telecom trying to do everybody a favour. But uh, anyway, we're, we're back now. So the reason I particularly wanted to get um, David and John on um, is it's quite a significant year. Um, I've known both lads exactly sort of 40 years, really, um, because it's 40 years this year that their dad, Pat, became champion trainer. Um, and it's 20 years this year since John took over from Linda, who I think had won, I think, six trainers' championships. So, I don't know, it just seems appropriate that after 40 years and 20 <laughs> years that uh, we get everybody on. Uh, have, we, have we got a problem there, McNair? No, that is, it says in the 40-year-old, so you can't know him 40 years. <laughs> don't start, don't start. You'll have your chance in a minute. Right, so the first thing I was going to do was rattling through some stuff. If necessary, I'll put him on mute. It might be any chance we've got. Um, what I did was I went through the Greyhound Star archives and just looked up for some Mullins stuff because Mullins is a just part of the history of Greyhound racing and anybody who doesn't understand that just doesn't know our game at all. And uh, I was looking back through the records. Um, but the first thing I really came across, which wasn't in the, really in the records, was... Uh, Pancho Villa, which I think you boys will remember your mum talking about. I think he was one of the first dogs she looked after, wasn't she, when she was a teenager? Um, won the St. Ledger uh, when she was a kennel girl at Wembley. I think she was work she worked for... Liz Reynolds. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so she worked for him. And then the first um, recollection, funnily enough, I, I have a Again, she'll probably, uh, you'll have grown up with the stories. I remember her telling about what a great sort of camaraderie was between um, uh, Harvey and uh, Les Reynolds at, in the Wembley Kennels. And I can, you know, for people of our generation, obviously they were before us. But I can remember telling me a story one day about um, how they used to wind each other up, probably a bit like present company, but they had pea shooters and they used to go around shooting each other with pea shooters because they were in next door kennels which i think was a lovely story because we always think about them being so stayed anyway looking back to the records the first thing i found about your mom was 1961 and it was a grand express feature and uh, your mom was 22 at the time and um she was talking about her aspirations and things she wanted to do in dogs and uh, what amongst the things she wanted to do was to go to a train in america which uh is something that she didn't do, but I think David had spent the spell out there. Um, I then found something late to 1962, and Jeffrey D. Mulder was training at Mistley, which again is when I first kind of really got to know you guys. The uh, For anybody who doesn't know, Mistley is the kennels um, in Essex, just on the Suffolk-Essex border. Um, and in fact, um, that's where Pat's buried in the in the cemetery, very close to the old kennels, um, where, the, where the family were for so many years. Um, 1963, I have Linda um, in English Bicknell, which I think is where Tony Meek has, has been based. Um, a few training from there, but I think originally at Lambourne, as I remember. Then rattling through um, 1965, uh, Jean Chappelle, your mum's, or it's your aunt, obviously, winning the Romford Puppy Cup, um, which is my first kind of memory. Uh, first. Trace I can really find of him winning a big competition. Though, um, again, anybody that knows their history will know that um, your mom and, and aunt bred a, one of the, perhaps the greatest dog ever exported from Britain uh, to America, a dog called Julius Caesar, who's in the American Hall of Fame. So, you know, this was 19, I think 1956. So when we talk about the Mullins family being embedded in ground racing, there is no argument. Um, and then the first thing I came about your dad was he was having a, um, an argument with journalists, uh, Reg Potter, um, who disliked seeding. And uh, your dad took him to task in various letters and phone calls and things um, because your dad was a big advocate of seeding. Um, 
then um, the opening of Ipswich 1974 and Pat won the first two races at Ipswich when it ran under rules. We all know that he won an awful lot of them on the, in the flapping days. Um, then I've got a lacquer champion, um, the lightest male greyhound ever to win the English Derby, 1978. And then uh, he went on and broke the track record at Wembley, 2887. Um, following year, sports promoter, and this is when the, the family were really coming to the fore. Sports promoter broke the track record at Cambridge, 17 months old, born and bred by yourselves, by your mum. Um, broke the track record at Cambridge in his very first race. Um, and then, of course, 1980, um, when your dad became champion trainer for the first time, or oh, the only mm -hmm. time, obviously, because he died. We lost him in, I think it was the following Me? March. Was it? Yeah, March 1980. Yeah, it was March, no, yeah. Yeah, March 1981. Um, and again, you know, I, I remember that so, so clearly. Um, I, I really thought the world of the man. And... Um, I can remember coming to the funeral. It was a very, very sad day. Um, <clears throat> and the, going on from that, of course, the kennel was still doing very well. Um, eventually, your mom moved on to Crayford uh, from Cambridge. Um, 1991, there was a bit of a dispute with John McGee over who was champion trainer, because I think one of them finished with the most open race wins and one finished with the most points. Again, you'll probably remember all of that. Um, your mum set a new record in 1993 for having 100 open race winners by May the 29th, which had never been done before. Um, and then I've got David. Um, obviously, I clearly missed out when you first went to Sunderland, but uh, that was when you arrived at Catford. Um, and I think you, didn't you move into Theo Menzies? Can yeah, I was, yeah, I was at Theo's for 18 months. Yeah. Over up in Sandy. That's right, yeah. Yeah, which of course isn't that far from me here. Um, then 94 grand of the year, uh, and then 1996 to 2000, Linda was champion trainer. Uh, I've also got David arriving at Romford in 1996. Um, oh, I've got one funny here as well, because um, I know Mr. Mr. Millwood um, as follows, follows the Zooms, because he sent me a couple of nice little notes through. And I've got here... Um, Champion trainer Linda Mullins is on the warpath in her regular Sporting Life column. She writes, finally, uh, finally, I was interested in Paul Millwood's comments in, in the Racing Post yesterday. He said they are loco trained by me, quote, maybe suited to a smaller kennel setup. I would like to know what he means by that and whether she ever actually kind of got grips to him. I've, I've, I've no idea. Um, following 1989, uh, 1999, um, a unique an event in the uh, Grand National Final where David and your mum, you had the dead heat. If you recall back in those, back in those oh, days. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we well, were first possibly. and second the year before. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd miss that. I'd miss that. Yeah, yeah we've quote that. And um, <laughs> some average herd to call Del Tenno, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember that you won it. Yeah. Um, and then 2000 um, was the mom that the, the year that uh, your mom that Linda retired, and there was a lovely quote here from um, John Coleman um, saying that the best she was the best trainer there has ever been, um, and she'd won the five previous trainers championship titles, and she got the lifetime achievers award. And the same year that Palace Issue, which again you also bred for people who haven't been in the game quite as long as we have. Um, we, of course, also bred at home. So it was a British bred, grey under the year, trained by your mum, etc. And then, of course, 2001, uh, young John finally uh, went about and earning a, pro a serious living on his own, took over training. Um, 2000, oh, there's a silly little story here about an attempt to make to steal one of your dogs, uh, Louisville. Um, that was in 2004. 2006, John leaving Walthamstow. And then uh, 2008, your mum not being at all well. I think she had a minor stroke at the time, but I know we've spoken recently and, and she's, she's uh, alive and doing well. So um, just before we speak to Mr. McNair, the one thing that, I, that um, didn't come out, and I think a lot of people probably didn't realise that, although John, you stayed firmly in the game, David, you, you got out of it for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I was in the Merchant Navy for four and a half years. 
So probably four and a half really good years, really. Yeah. Oh, we. What's this day to fall on the fish? He can't help himself, can he? He can't help himself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not believing this. I'm definitely not believing this. Merchant Navy. What was the matter? Well, Could they not get in the Royal Navy? I did. I was going to go to the Royal Navy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was a bit too rough for them. <laughs> <laughs> a bit too undisciplined at the time. <laughs> oh, well. oh dear. Right. I'm learning. I'm learning an awful lot about you lads tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, the, that's the scary bit. Now, um, on similar subjects, um, obviously, you lot know each other very, very well. And uh, I gather, Mr. McNair, you've always um, had a bit of um, lifestyle advice for these lads. Uh, listen, the, the one thing I always did notice about them, when I, I, I mean, I first seen John, was I think it was in the gym crack when I was running about with full cigar. Uh, forget the name of the dog he had. You would need to. You would need to remind me. It was a great dog he had at the time. Uh, I met him at Hall Green, and I always saw it. They were a bit. The two of them were a bit kind of. I would probably say it's shy. You know what I mean? They, they, they wouldn't say too much, but like I eventually, I, I eventually grinded them down. I eventually. Kept bantering away with them and bantering away with them, and I always, I always liked their attitude in life because I knew what they had went through in life, and I knew much the same as well. I didn't have lost my dad, but the the the, the, the it was the same kind of practice when you were on the flaps. You you speak to nobody, you keep your, everything into yourself. Everything was kept in the flat family unit, and the lads were. I could see much the same as that and within ourselves. It's just that once I come down here, it was a different game. It was just, it was made open. You, were, you weren't trying to pull jobs off, although I think they two were still trying to pull jobs off. I had relaxed a wee bit by then. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I, I think David Strait is still trying to do it. Now that Mr. Adown's moved on. <laughs> oh. But... Uh, I think over the past couple of years we've became uh, uh, close and, and, and good friends and have a good laugh and listen, I, I'm on a side John on Sunday night and it didn't matter if David would have a race, a, a, a bitch in the race along with us, it wouldn't matter to me, it, we, we would be there, we would have the banter, we would have a bit of the crack, I would wind them up, they would just stand there and no say too much and they would take it. But when it come out to the race, we've just got on with it, and after it, we'd, we would congratulate whoever wins it, and we'd stay the best of friends. But there'd, there'd be no bad feelings. It's always the same way as we always have a good laugh. Yeah. I, I understand that you, you, you kind of uh, had a few views on about their hairstyles. I, I think I've got a picture of them here. Hold on. Uh, well, let's, let's just have a quick look. Here we go. Hold on. This didn't work out quite as it should have done. <laughs> No matter. Here we go. We should be here somewhere. I've, I've got that. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. Is yeah, that John and it. David? Yeah, that's John yeah, on the left. I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely, I'm definitely seeing a ponytail there with John's <laughs> mother. There's definitely a ponytail there, and David. Well, David's never changed. John's put a wee bit kind of, a wee bit run the gills there. You know what I mean? But David's never changed. I can't say anything actually. You can't. Oh, actually, let me see, let me see if I can find it again. Hold on. <laughs> So that was the Bros boys, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You was on the left, I was on the right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, no, yeah. we, well, I, have, I have actually got some pictures of these lads. Hold on a minute. Now, I've, I've got a nice one here. Oh, I don't think we want to see this. There we go. Hold Everybody, on. Everybody. Every share screening on this one. Everybody wants to see them. Right, have we have we what got this? It? No, I haven't got it yet. No. Hold on. No. Oh, here we go. It's all right. My mistake. Here we go. Oh, oh there it is. Look at that, lad. <laughs> Look at that. That's 
mate, John. Look at the ponytail at the back. There's no ponytail. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> deny that. There's no ponytail, Ram. Where's the ponytail? Oh, John, John. There's no listen, ponytail. Andy that looks at that can see that the hair was there for the ponytail, and you only had, you only used to put a, you used to put any of the hair bands in it when you were working in the kennels. Never had a hair band on. You, you never you never showed yourself in public with a ponytail, but in the kennels, I've heard stories you always wore the ponytail in kennels. You've never heard that from anyone. <laughs> I, 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 I just spent a bit of time to see if we could find one, one with an earring, but there was What's no chance. Find one with an earring. He's, hold on, he's not he's not getting away with that on his own. Hold on, I've got <laughs> one with an I've got another one here somewhere. <laughs> hold on, yeah, about about. Oh, John. Oh, John. <laughs> Did you see that, Elizabeth? Did you see that? <laughs> see that, Liz? Is that right, Liz? Here we go. See that, Liz? Is that right, Liz? <laughs> How about this one? Oh, Champion States 1998. That's Patrick. Yeah, he's no, Patrick, yeah. Yeah, little Patrick. Hey, Reb, look, that was a young Julie. Oh, oh T and hang David. You were very lucky. I was never. Uh, you are a very lucky man <laughs> that I was not down here at that time. Oh, you, would heard have Julie, you would have swept her off, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've often heard Julie say, um, "Rab had been a lot younger, eh?" Where, where are, are you in that picture, Jordan? No. Of course, I'm not, David. That's David's champion right. state with um, Potto Storm. <laughs> oh, dear, I, David's very, very young looking there, isn't he? Yeah. Have we not got any pictures Nothing's of Nothing's changed. I, I tell you what, I was trying to get some and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't come up with anything. I, 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 do, I do seem to remember that I uh, contacted uh, Lib or tried to, but uh, she wasn't very forthcoming, so <laughs> it wasn't for any lack of effort. John, John, forget about it, mate. I don't get grassed in. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him, Floyd. Ask him about that. Eh? Mwah, mwah, mwah. Well done, John. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Is that Liz? <laughs> I says, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> we've, just, we've just been, we've just been hammered here, and she's away kissing him. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> well done, John. <laughs> I can regret that night. <laughs> <laughs> You've always had that effect, John. Oh, dear. Eh? You've eh? always had that effect, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good oh, night, Rab. Eh? That was a good night. It was, it was a, a, especially a good night for you. You had done something that I didn't think you were capable of doing. Uh, no, no, just you. No, just you. I didn't think that... that I didn't think the dog was capable of beating me, and that's me being triple joining. You went there and your dog blasted the boxes, and it, it, it went well that night. And we're sorry, which place are we talking about here? Uh, the, Bri oh, British 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 the British The British race, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nottingham. I think I had two runners in it. I think I had, I had Sheeran and, uh, was it King Turbo or something like that? I, I think I had two runners in it. And <coughs> I think Sheeran was very short, but big John put... Uh, it's one thing about this game, and I've always said it. There's always somebody out there willing to bring you down to earth. It doesn't matter how big you get or how small you are. Yeah, there, there's always somebody who walks along and just pulls you down to earth. And I thought I was going there that night to win it. I, I, I don't hide the fact yet. John, John knows that. And John just hit us a slap in the back of the head and said, now, now, wee man, I'm there so down. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then the next thing I pick up, who lives away kissing him. <laughs> well done, John. If you listen to it, you can hear, you can actually hear me swearing. <laughs> yeah, you did that, you. That'll do, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, it's, uh, it, has, it has actually turned into, well, I think it has, uh, me personally, myself and my wee wife, she thinks the world is joining David and I think the world is joining David and I think it's turned into a, a great friendship and a great bit of carry on and uh, you've got to remember Floyd when we moved down here we there were there, there were actually no many people we knew down in this side of it and as the years have went by we've got to know more and more people the likes of the Fox and uh, John and David and all the rest of it and 
we 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 Dan Brabin and that and some of them just stick by. But what I've always thought about is I've always been learnt something when I was younger. I always surround yourself with clever people, and you'll pick up and we ideas off them. And I, I think that's what I've kind of in the back of my mind I've always done because I always rated the Mullins brothers as I mean as you said at the beginning of the program the the history in the greyhound the, the steeped in greyhounds the, the greyhounds run through their veins yeah. you know what I mean and uh, if I kind of pick up wee tips off of them and I suppose I don't know whether it'll be vice versa they'll probably no listen to anything I say but I always listen to what they say and I always listen to Big John and David and that I listen to Liz <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to introduce this by saying we've we've two top trainers and a kennel boy on, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's, that, that's gone made him go quiet. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Listen to that big join. That's going to take a, that's going to fall off that couch. <laughs> of course, you realise that, um, and again, if since I made such a bollocks of this already, but uh, let's see if we can get on to, sorry, my screen is, screen doesn't really fit, but here we go. This is what we need to be talking about, is here. Give me a glacier. Which we've got, oh, that's up, it. I believe. That's the Oaks final. The Oaks final. Yeah. Gentlemen, what are your views? Well, to be true for you, you and Liz, we and Gaskins dog, his bitch is running great. Big John's bitch is running fantastic. She's well named Fantastico, a great dog that I've on strain, eating a kid. Brilliant bitch. John would probably have wanted her in trap six, and I would have probably have wanted her in trap six day because you and Liz could have been doing with getting and a wee bit, if anything, right? But as far as I'm concerned, I'm delighted with where I am. And I'll turn up there and I'll give them everything I can. I'll, I'll give everything I can. And if I beat them, they'll know I've beat them. If they beat me, I'll be hello and cheerio and I'll speak to you the one. Well, they'll be, they'll be a bit more snogging at the pickup, I reckon. Yeah, there's that, one thing, Floyd. We'll definitely not be exchanging kisses. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even picture that. That that site now is just with me. I don't, I don't need that. No, it's listen. It's, it's just great. Uh, listen, it's a big thanks to Colin Davy. He's put up some good money here. Uh, we've all got to get, put to a hat off to him. He, he's put up a good prize money. I know David was in the Oaks. He, he's he got the semi. Uh, he got to the semi final. He didn't get to the final, did he? Did he? No. No, right. Uh, um, I'm no uh, David. To be true for you, I, I didn't even watch, and that's me being true for you. I'm no come. I'm no taking the piss or man like that. But <laughs> listen, it's just great to be in the final. It's another big race. It's the Oaks. I've won it a couple of times before. Uh, Shaw's dilemma and Droopy's hope, and I was second, and it was scale on. Uh, the Oaks has always been a favourite of mine. I've never had much luck at uh, Swindon Way with the Oaks, but this wee bitch seems to be running Swindon excellent. She won the produce stakes through there, so I just hope it stands her in good stead and we can get in there and do the business on Sunday, but it's a hard enough race because when you get to an Oaks final, it's, I, I count it as the bitch's derby and when you get to a derby final, it's it's never cut and dry. They're, they're, they're all there to win it and they'll there might be a big surprise and all the rest of it, you never know. We'll just go to wait and see. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm really what's, looking what's forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's good that the Swindon are letting, having guests in, you know, guests of the finalists in. in yeah. Class and, you know, so that's a good good bit. Um, it's a hard race. Uh, Rabs, uh, Rabs Beach is doing it all right. Uh, Ernie's is. Um, we have to pop out and lead. Uh, cut across and see what happens. It's a fantastic race. Uh, like Ram said, it's the Oaks. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to stick it back up there again, just so it never... Yeah, as, you know, a pure quality. Again, nice to see two, two British breads in one and two. Yeah, English, yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, you can't be the English. <laughs> yeah, 
which just reminds me, to be honest, it was. Yeah, it was we all got. We are a minute, Floyd. We are a minute. Oh, just calm a wee bit. Let me sort then. that out right now. Can we not call this British for the sake of us being Scottish here? And never mind him shouting about English. Can we not say these are British bred? All right. I'll tell you what I'll do with you. That Queen Jessie, where was she born? She was born in my hands, which belonged to a Scotsman. Now, where was she born? In my hands. So if I have a ground born in a stable, does that make that a horse? <sighs> He always comes away with some past, doesn't he, lad? Yeah. He always comes up. He always comes away with some scenes, doesn't he? You're gonna, Rab, Rab, mate. You're gonna have to be a little bit careful because if if President President Nicola takes over Scotland and it becomes a republic, you know, you, you're gonna find yourself as an asylum seeker over here, and and you're gonna need these lads to vouch for you, and you know. <laughs> 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 We'll vouch for Liz, don't worry about that. Yeah, well, I mean, but Liz, Liz, Liz and Angela Harrison, I mean, they'd be key workers. They could probably stay, but himself and, and Jimmy, Jimmy no. they might be in big trouble. Yeah. Let me it tell you some, run. Floyd. Let it me tell run. you some right now, Floyd. If I have to rely on them to get a green stamp, I'll tell you, they'll not <laughs> give me it. They'll be sending me back home. <laughs> <laughs> I think John Mullins will lie to say to them 25 when I'm going by. Laughing, <laughs> just just showing you it. <laughs> the, the big arrow pointing Scotland that way. <laughs> I think you probably the road, take you to the wall, to be honest. Ten mile along the road, we Essex will be standing with the other sign. Don't forget to get up the M1 rab. <laughs> you never, you never, did quite, you never did quite explain where the Essex word um, <laughs> nickname came from. Essex. Well, yeah. I always, I always think about the the only way is Essex. When that started, I, I, I looked at David, and it always reminded me of David's always well dressed, always well. I've not, I don't think I've ever met David, and he's no, he's no looked apart. Me and John sometimes, I don't know, we walk a bit sometimes, <laughs> but I know. We don't fit the bow, David, but David always he always looks apart when you look at him and he's always well dressed and well manicured and all the rest of it. And I just thought to myself, I think he'd be better on that program, the only yeah. way he's Essex. <laughs> and then I thought about it and I used to listen to David Essex as a singer. And I, I, it just kind of came together and I just thought to myself, how you doing, Essex? And he just looked at me and he and just, and just, and you just think he's the flash one. You want to keep an eye on Kelly. Kelly was the flash one. Oh, yeah, he was proper flash. Uh, you, you, I've heard I've heard plenty. I've heard you, plenty. You, but David. look at David. You look at David tonight. Look at the hair. It's been well gelled. Look at the tan. <laughs> well, well, listen, we're now into December. And David, of course, will try and tell you that that's off the sun tan, that you got it in the sun out in the fresh air, but you have a proper look at it. You can you see can that's to, a You can go day. to Brentwood and buy it in the shop. Yeah. Get it out of the bottle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> no, so, no it's, it's always just been something that's going to stuck there, and I just thought, hey, that's wee Essex. How you doing, Essex? And that was that. It just stuck. It yeah. just kind of stuck after that, and... Yeah, I've just said a wee bit. I, I remember you telling it. me telling me about Essex and Mullins the mullet, uh, with, with uh, the way they were described to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David Essex, David Essex, and John John Ponytail the mullet. <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, get on the most, most, most sensible subjects, gentlemen. Yes. Right. Yeah, and there was Actual there were some one. more pictures there because the one thing I did want to talk about on a more sensible level was British breeding. And of course, coming up, if I can manage this, we should then have this one, which... Uh, oh, my God. It's a I lovely photo, isn't it? Magical pipe the litter, isn't it, David? Magical cheese. Christ. Could be. It's a lovely photo, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What I mean that is? That's a long time ago. That Look is a long straw. time ago. Look the straw. I, I tell you, funnily enough, it, it, it's not actually my, my favourite picture of your mum because I think this one, hold on, let's find it, is is even better. This is, uh, 
And again, don't want to embarrass anybody here, but uh, well, I would. Let me have a look. And here we've got this one, which is share screen. How about that one? <laughs> was that the first title one? Um, I don't actually think that was a, a title winning that night, actually. It might be, it might be, it might be. That was a long time ago. Is that you there again, John? Yeah. Again, no ponytail. No, but I'll tell you something right now, John. I do think you've lost weight for, weight for then, have you? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a cracking photo. I absolutely love it. It is. It is. Uh, a, mother a, a mother and son. Uh, no grey hair there. No, no. <laughs> You probably didn't hear your license out there, and that's why. Yeah, I did. I was driving that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would have been a quick journey. <laughs> <laughs> that's why your mother's got all the grey hair there. Huh? Letting you drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, so I'm trying to trying to get back to sense, sensible sensible talking now. David, do you, are you doing any breeding at all? Yeah, we breed two or three litters a year. Yeah. Um, got a couple of. But to be honest with you, 60% of our kennels is usually based on our own breed. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've, we've run a couple of group ones with them. So, we've not yes, done too I, bad. I, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of the, the last lot. Um, oh, dear. I'm, I'm, I'm was, the black dog, was the black dog no British bread that was an English derby at Wimbledon? Uh, yeah. Um, what was his name? Bonamassa Rocks. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that was one of ours. I, I remember him. It was a great dog. Yeah, Derby probably come around just a little bit too soon for him, but... Uh, yeah. there's, al there's always an excuse. There is, isn't there? <laughs> 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 only an excuse. <laughs> no, I what? remember the dog. I, I think at the time, we, I was watching that dog, and uh, I think it ran one would have great, but I, I think... Did you not have a wee problem with him just before the derby started yeah, or so? He picked up a, a shoulder injury um, during one right. of the trial sweeps. I remember it. Yeah, he was on treatment twice a day. For it and got him to the quarters and with that quick run sort of put paid to him. That's right. That's yeah. right. I remember the dog. I remember the dog. John, what have you got on at the moment? I've got... Um... A litter of pups. I don't. I don't know the breeding. I've done. I've got two litters of pups here for Kevin Hutton, and one for Carla Hendry. I've got a litter of pups over from Ireland that I'm rearing for Jack. Um, they're out of. Uh, I don't know what they're out. I'm no good for uh, names. But we are going to breed from Racket All Jess uh, oh. when she comes in season, um, and I'm sure. Well, I'm fairly confident. Uh, small mead, but not for a long time yet. Yeah. Um, yes, you, you, you struggled with a bit, didn't you? Because I know you how much you thought of her and, and it all went wrong in various ways. What, what exactly happened with her? I think it went wrong when we put her on the pill. Yeah. Um, as soon as we put her on the pill, it all went downhill. Uh, and then she'd done a tendon and she'd done one on the other wrist. Um, so, yeah, basically, I think she got to the, the semi finals of the ledger. Um, she won a few opens, but you know, it, we did struggle with her. But she came over as a great bitch, came over from Holland, Graham Holland. Um, she's a lovely bitch. So uh, we're definitely going to have a litter of pups with her. Um, Jack owns her with Chris. Uh, we haven't uh, basically said who we're going to. Uh, I'm sure we'll look at King Elvis or... Um, Rab said another one, Lati. What was the other one you said? Lemon Eye Turbo, was it? Lemon Eye Turbo, I froze it. Well, that's what Jesse J's out here, Lemon Eye Turbo and... Uh, to be true for you, John, in the past week I've heard a lot of reports about the Elvis dog. And I haven't went looking for to see what he's been doing. It's just people that's come back and told me, uh, I think it's that Stuart Tight for Newcastle, I think he's in with Macari, they've got 10 pops out of Elvis. And I've never heard a bad word said about his pops. His pops seem to be absolutely brilliant. Now, I think it's a bit early yet. But I hear a, a few of them schooling, <coughs> and it's supposed to be looking good, really good. Now, 
at this moment, I'm a bit disappointed because I did try and send two bitches up and get mated by Elvis, and I never got nothing. So I'm sitting in a position just now without an Elvis pop, which I don't like to do. I like to be one of the first ones because I feel as if I can promote them. I promote them better myself, and I know I try and do everything right. A bit like yourself, John. You, you, you try and do things to the best of our ability. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But, but especially when it's your own dog, you don't rush them too quick. You don't put them out there in the track too quick. You try and promote them properly and put your own stud dog out there. And uh, that, that kind of disappointed me a wee bit with Elvis because, to be true for you, I actually thought he was an outstanding greyhound. I know you loved him, John. You 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 just couldn't take your eye off him. I, I, I always watched you and you always spoke very highly of him. I would have just loved to have had pops out of him, but I'll have them out him for next year, that's for sure. Uh, but, I, I was going to say, you know, we, we're in a position now look, looking at looking at breeding, and uh, we, this came up very briefly in, in, in a previous Zoom call, but we're looking at how much, how many dogs we're short of dogs anyway let's let's not kid ourselves i mean you know bellevue closed which freed up some dogs and peterborough closed and freed up some dogs we're now looking because of covid at a massive decline in, in ireland um i think was it 28 percent or something down in matings um, and that was comparatively early in the year i think that was september that, that i went back and obviously we'd only have covered a period once COVID kicked in, which was in March time, I can't see that of improving in any way. And I, you do wonder um, how we're going to be coping for dogs in nine months, three years' time. Well, yeah, from across Ireland? Across the tracks. John, what's your thoughts? Well, from Ireland, you may know from here. Yeah, yeah, from Ireland. And it just occurs to me that surely there's never been a time in recent times that it would be more worthwhile to start for, for British breeding. Is British breed, yeah, hundred percent because of the races that uh, uh, that are out there now, the races that are coming from the British uh, Breed Fund, and th there's there's a few ways to look at it. Um, COVID, we're not being allowed in the tracks. Owners aren't being allowed. Then there's also there's the side. Is there going to be open racing? Are people in Ireland going to breed for graders? No. There's loads of ways to look at it, but the English breeding is going to take off and has taken off and will take off um, because the races that are out there now for British breeding. You, you, you're looking at the value of dogs just has to has to go up. There's no possible way around it because the tracks are going to have to come up with more money. Ultimately, the bookmakers are going to, have to come up with more money if they want their races because the, the, if you look around, I mean, you had, you both, you two had both had a fine list recently at, at Romford. Uh, two dogs that were what hundred races. Four and a half years old. Yeah, four and a <clears> half <throat> years yeah. old. Now I think we're going to see more and more of that personally of, of older dogs that are going to be kept in training. But even older dogs, you can push their ages back and push them back a little bit. Like you, you get slower and slower dogs. Which let's face it, you look at some other tracks now. The dogs are so slow that you know that, that a, a decent lurcher would probably grade. So it based on that sort of situation. Um, you cannot keep pushing ages back. So sooner or later, you're going to have to come up with more dogs. I mean, that's, that's how I would see it. Um, well, there's certainly no retired dogs out there, so they're obviously keeping them running. Um, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I think we're definitely going to see a, uh, an increase in British breeding for the uh, races that are coming out now. Definitely. Uh I would agree with you there, John. I do think there's going to be a, a, a well, listen, and I've always thought about it, and so, some of the things that I can't understand, I, I just can't get my head around about it. I, I don't understand people going down that line anyway, because I, I, I know it's not really hard, John, is it? So you have to add it into your daily life and make it a bit of fun. With the pops and all the rest of it, and you have to, it, it, it takes a wee bit of time, but you get it right, you get it right. And listen, there's, there's, I never had any more enjoyment walking into tracks with King Turbo and King Elvis and King Sheeran and that. I mean, it just, <coughs> a bit like David, as, as I, I tried to explain to David, and I, I, I did, I was talking to David at Central Park, I said, David, 
You're doing exactly the same as what I do because he's got 10 pins just now. He's actually too nervous to enjoy it. And after it, that's when you sit back and you say, why did I not enjoy that as much? Because you're, you're, you're on the edge. You're, you're so nervous at a time. But I think more and more people should be getting into the British breeding. I think if you've got the land, and I've always said this before, I don't understand some of these old farmers that's running about there and they've got three or four acres or five acres of land that they're not using. Because it's, it, it used to happen years ago, the farmers always had the little pups running about. They would lick up the milk and the floor of the, where the, the milking machines were and all the rest of it. They were getting fed and all the rest of it. And, I mean, these, these lads have got to understand that if they do come across a litter of pups, they can get this whole 50, 60, up to 100 grand if they turn out all right. And there's nothing to say that they won't turn out right because the one thing I've, I've noticed, and it, I know I, I spend a lot of time looking at breeding and studying breeding and all the rest of it, Floyd, but you never got a badly bred bitch now. There's no <clears> such a thing as a badly bred bitch. <throat> And there's no such a thing as a badly bred dog. Whereas back in the day when I was growing up, we were breeding dogs at the back door. You know what I mean? Flattened dogs, no earmarks, no nothing, bush, 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 and you just done it. But they all turned out all right. They were well done. But these days are gone now, and every greyhound out there is probably the high standard of breeding now. It maybe wasn't the quality, but it always had the bloodlines in it. You know what I mean? So... I just think there's big, big, massive opportunities out there for the people that want to do it. I, uh, to be honest, it, it goes back a little bit, the conversation I had with, with John Sharp last week, because, of course, he had two in the final uh, this week. You know, they, they finished down the field. It didn't really matter in that I think he got, I don't know, several hundred races from, from the one litter. And if you're a small trainer and you, you want to be able to supply your own dogs. Um, he said to me himself, he said, that kept, that list has kept me going for a couple of years. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the position that we're moving into. And just going back to something that you said, it was an observation I made many, many years ago, um, long before, when I used to have the stud books, long the days long before everything was on computer and Greyhound data and, and the rest of it, and people didn't even know what they were breeding with. But back in those days, there were so many of these bitches that people would breed, the flapping lads were breeding with, and they were basically very, very poor. There was, you'd, you'd ask what they yeah. done, you go, well, this used to run halfway up the card at Spennymore, or, or this, because it was the yeah. flapping lads were breeding with poor quality bitches. You're breeding with the kind of bitches that, that, that John is talking about, you know, a racket hall Jess, or some of the bitches that you go, go around S1 at, at Romford or, 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 you know, 2380 for, for the 400 at Romford. Yeah. You've got something that's worth breeding from. I, I, I agree with you a million percent there. I mean, I mean, because the bloodlines is all there. Uh, as, as long as you're not breeding off of something, listen, that's a proper, proper villain because you're going to get that coming out through it. You know what I mean? But, and it never bothered me to have a wee bit of a kink in it because as long as they had the wee bit of the kink in them, they had the speed. You know what I mean? And you, you, you could, you could, if, if I had a bitch that had that wee bit of kink, the first dog I would have in my mind would be Elvis because Elvis was, he was just an animal. Yeah. He just instinct. And I would breed that into my bitch, you know what I mean? And that would breed that wee bit kink out. But I'd be wanting to keep the speed there, Floyd, you know what I mean? I, I, everything's so. all, all, all about the speed and all the rest of it. But you, you also want a wee bit of intelligence up there, not just a, a, an aeroplane that doesn't know how to go buy a dog or doesn't know what he's doing. You want that wee bit of intelligence up there. And I always think it's nice if you put a bitch in the back of the van and she travels over if she travels up to Sheffield and you don't even know you've got a bitch in the back of a van and she walks into the kennels and everything she does is proper, that's the type of bitches I look for that have got the manners, that have got the intelligence and everything. And I think to myself, this is worth taking a chance with because she's got the lines, she's got the brains, she's got the intelligence, she's got the manners. Let's give this a shot. And then you sit down and study because you've got the main part there when you've got the bitch. You've got the main part there. Yeah. The next thing is to try and line it up to the dog, line it up to the dog, and after that, it's doing your best. You speak to Nicky Sava, you speak to Andy out there, it's all about doing your best. 
Very much so. I mean, Nick, I, I, funny enough, I think John and I were having a conversation the other day and we're saying, you know, breeding is not an exact science, but it's not a complete gamble either, because it's a little bit like saying betting. Um, you, you can get beat with a four to seven chance, but you'd be rather back in four to seven chances and 33 to one chances. And, and I think that that's what applies with breeding. And going back to, to the times I spent with Nick long before we even produced the book, um, but talking to him about the book and uh, it was so obvious that one of his, one of his things that he learned and along the way and learned from trial and error was it wasn't necessarily the fastest pitches or the fastest even stud dogs. It was those who had the most determination to throw it in their pub. Yeah. So you could have a yeah. fast two stud dogs, one of whom was two or three lengths faster than the other. But if he wasn't using or his pups weren't using all that ability because they didn't have the guts for it, they didn't have the drive for it, it that speed was useless. That was no use to you at all because they were chicken hearted dogs. And the same thing, some of his better broods, I think Westman's Flight was a, was a kind of minor open race bitch um, at, at uh, I think Tom Foster had her down at uh, Wimbledon. And she ended up, he also had, um, what's her name, um, the UK bitch, um, Drupal Nardini's down, uh, Little Diamond, he also had... Oh, yeah. Down at one stage. And, you know, he was saying that he can remember schooling, schooling pups, and um, the, the the bitch um, Westmead Flight, who ultimately threw Sonic Flight and threw Lark Hill Joe, she was by no means the fastest bitch in the kennel. But he can remember as a as a sort of an eight month old puppy jumping a six foot fence because there were schooling trials going on. She was so genuine, and that's yeah what she she would make a great brood. And there were quite a few yeah. examples of that. See, I, I, well, to be truthful, you there listening to John, I was a wee bit surprised John seeing that he, he, he put the bitch in the peel because that's one thing I would never do. Never, oh. ne never. I, I, if I've got a bitch there that I'm intending to go for pups or on, on the rest, I put her on the pill at the time, but I've never done it since and I never will. No, because the, the, the one thing I have learned is any of my bitches. That I've had, I've never had on the power, I've never had on anything like that because to be truthfully joined back in the day when we were back flapping and all the rest of it, the most common thing to use back then was the Laura Bolling when we were the bitches out flapping and all the rest of it. And, we, and I never seen any of the bitches that was on the Laura Bolling or anything like that. I never seen any of them throwing much good, you know what I mean? And I, I, I know, I just, I just think that you're interfering with nature with these kind of things. And uh, if, if I've got a bitch in mind like Jessie J, Queen Beyonce, Skate On, none of these bitches, they were always clean. They never they never interfered with their seasonal break. They just were allowed to go through it and do what they had to do. And when the time came, everything was nice, nice, John. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's had a couple of seasons now. Uh, where it's all cleaned out of her, so next time she comes yeah. to the season properly, she'll be, re you know, clean, ready. Yeah. Um, you know, you learn, uh, it was one of those things, she went on the pill, because I think she was six monthly, or f she come in uh, uh, quickly, so we, you know, at the time had it done. Nah. But, I uh, can understand that, and I do know some people that do it, I, I, I do know a lot of people that do it, that put them in the pill, and then they have to wait, and, I would always, uh, uh, I would always say, wait, wait, give them a season after it, and let them have a good clean out, and then that's what we do. After with that, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with you a million percent. But listen, it, it's, I don't say that I know everything about it. I might be well off the mark there. I don't know enough about it. I always, I'm, I'm I don't just think a, any of us. We learn every day. Whatever we do, we learn every day. Whatever yeah. you know. It's I, mean, I had, I had two sisters. And from day one, when they were born, there was one I particularly wanted to breed with. And when it come to it, when they both, these two sisters, they retired, an owner asked me to breed with this other one, which was like an A5 bitch, um, pretty picky eater. And he was a loyal owner, he'd been with me a long time, and I thought, well, what harm can it do? The worst that can happen is they'll just be graders. Now, the two sisters, I put the one, that I wanted to be, we was top class, and she threw nothing. The A5, 
through open races in every litter. And there you go. Yeah, you know, and they were That's... the same. They were the same um, breeding. Yeah, just goes to show you it's different. Uh, the as, as Floyd said, they're no, they're no science to it. They're none of us. They're none of us. I mean, if, if it was done to perfect science, we'd all be sitting working it out, and we'd all be walking into tracks with champions every time we done it. You know what I mean? But uh, you, you, we, we've all came across that sometimes we walk in there and <laughs> you stand there and the hair's going round and don't want to leave our side. <laughs> <They're> st- <laughs> We've all been there, haven't we? So, uh, we've actually been too good to them. They're just standing there looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do here, Rami? <laughs> oh, listen, there's, there's absolutely no science to it. I'll, I'll agree with you 100% there. But I think what you've got to do is, uh, I always consider it as percentages. And you, you have to make the percentage off, of you, off for you. Make, tr- you'll never get it a hundred percent, but you have to try and. But do you not also it. think? Do you not also think as well, like not boosting up, up that we know we 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 do it right as well. We ha- we put the work in. Um, there's no good putting, you know, the, the great dog and the great bitch together. If you're not doing it right after that, you know, beforehand, you've got to rear them right. You know, if they're born in the back garden, and it isn't going to work, is it? That's one area I think is wrong in the breeding over here. Um, there's, there's a lot of people that breed, they haven't got a clue what they're doing and they haven't got the facilities and all they're doing is creating a backlog on the retirement um, scheme because they're, they're not going to make it. You know, I think you should, you should have the... Faci- it's an area that should be policed, you know, where I think you should have, be able to have the, faci- the facilities for them to run. They've got to be able to run loose with a wide open spaces. And I think there's quite a few that are made in too, too small a compound. Yeah. Right there. And I mean, there's times you've heard people say, uh, rearing pups is easy. You just chuck a bag of nuts in the field and away they go. (laughs) Um, Uh, (laughs) And all three of us know that, um, well, we could that time. always that always ends in disaster, John. Listen, it that's that, that that's that that's how. Listen, you got a lot of people that turn around and say, "Ah, it's all right, rearing a lot of pups, but it's very expensive." Yes, that will be very expensive because you're not going to have nothing at the end of it. Yeah, you, you, you know, and I know, and David knows, and all the rest of it because. You, John, I, I, that's one thing I've always admired about you, that some of the pops that you've produced, and the same with David, David's produced some great pops and all the rest of it, and I've followed on through there, you know what I mean? Because I used to sit back when I first come down here and watch, I, I remember the dog coming into Central Park, I think it broke a track record at Central Park, I think you'd reared it. Uh, was it with Paul Salas or... Was it, was it you that had him, John? Some Johnny? Oh yeah, that's yeah, that was us. That was that Blondini and um, Tuesday Blue. Yeah, how long ago is that, John? Um, that'd be about that'd be about six, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. See that kind of thing stuck in my head. Yeah. And Johnny just, Boy. Huh? Johnny Boy, I think. The owner uh, was Johnny Boy. Yeah, we read him, and but Tuesday Beanie. Um, yeah, he would. He'd done the clock at Swindon, didn't he, for the produce stakes? Yeah, yeah. It's just that I managed to equal that clock, didn't I? <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't break it. <laughs> Any story you tell know will be a winning story, at Reb. I, I, I just kind of let you get away with too much here, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I think the, the one thing that, again, talking about about uh, the boys and, and obviously the mum and dad was. Um, you know, they they bred and reared and trained two grounds of the year, and they did it with a siren dam that they were all that were in the kennel. You know, it wasn't even as though they went out and, and got exotic Breakway Town Kensington Queen, wasn't it? It was what? Sorry, Breakway Town Kensington Queen Sports Promoter, I think. That's right. That was that first litter, and and, and as to mm. memory, there were there were Boys Town and there were various and other Palace Issues. There. Palace Issues litter, I think, was a repeat. Is that right, David? A repeat, mate. Yeah, I mean, actually, the sports promoter litter, the um, the fastest dog in the litter was a dog called um, Sports Advisor. And I remember Sports Promoter, I think he had the clock round Cambridge, 26.05. Mm. 
if I remember right. And sports, sports advised, if you put him in a solo, would go around in 25.50. Yeah. If you put him in with another dog, he'd eat it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've never seen a dog go around a bend like him. He used to go like a, a 500cc motorbike going around a bend. It was unbelievable. He'd be, his rib cage would be almost on the sand. Oh, they, yeah. they were great litter, and of course they weren't. They weren't even particularly good looking, were they? I mean, he was quite a small dog sports promoter. I mean, I was I was in the racing office at Cambridge when they were running around there. Yeah, and um, I, I was thinking about that. There's another subject I was going to bring up because at Cambridge at that time, um, and I've mentioned it to you. You know, I, I used to love to see your dad. Your dad used to sort of like give court on trial sessions, and he'd get crowd thirty, a bit like Rab, if you like. He'd get crowd like thirty people standing around there listening to him. And, um, but at the time, you know, Nick, Nick Sava was there and he had that um, special account and, and Joe Cobbold was there with, with all the great decoys. decoys Theo yeah. was there with all the Ricassos. Gary Baggs was there. There was so much good breeding in Cambridge at that time. And it was, it was all British breeding. So but if you think, if you think back to the employed, now just let your mind Slip back to the days because I was only a young lad at the in the days. We're but the same was, age right now. We're the same age. Yeah, but I, I, I wasn't into. Uh, I, I was flapping then. I'll not say I was a young you lad. You probably lied about your age then. then. But what what I would do, uh, I would always get a monthly magazine, right? And uh, the, the two papers we used to get, we used to get a greyhound donor every. Uh, I think, uh, I think it came in a, a, was it a Friday. We used to get a Greyhound owner and we used to get a, the magazine, the Greyhound Monthly. Mm. It used to come in a glossy magazine. And when you think back to the days, and of course you had the Linda Mullins and all the rest of it, but when you think back to the British breeding back then, your Westmeads, your decoys, and all the rest of it, your castles, Floyd, it was out of this world that would compete with the best in the world. Yes. You know what I mean? Because every one of these dogs, the, the letters after letters that these boys were breeding, were all breaking track records every month or every second month. They were champion sprinters and they were champion over all different distances. And I think it, sh it should be coming back because they, they, they just need the, the But to begin with, I think what's holding a lot of it back is the sport itself. Because I don't think anybody knows, will I breed this bitch, will I breed that bitch, and will this sport still be here in two or three years' time? This is, this is the biggest problem we have got at this moment in time. We have not got a clue in how this sport's going. One minute we're thinking to ourselves, Oh, it's, it's looking good for next year. This is looking good for next year. Look at the open races. Look at the category ones they've put out there. Now, the, the first thing, the first one, I think it was last month, Bush, out it came. Ark was, was putting all these category ones on and all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I looked at it, Floyd, and I thought to myself, by God, this is going to be great next year. Wait to SIS. Wait, wait till they come out, your Romfords and Hoves and your Mormors and, and come out there. Because at the moment, you've got the two companies competing against one another. And it's like the two shops down the, down the road. As long as you've got competition, you'll always have that. So uh, that, that made me think everything's going to be good. But then I get talking to some people and they tell us, yes, Arts, but they open races out there, but they've not got any sponsors, so they don't know where they're going. So that kind of draws me back a wee bit again, and I think to myself, well, what is actually going on in this game? Well, we need we, we, we need clarification for, I don't know who, who can give us it. I don't know whether it can be a... I don't know whether it can be uh, your Mark Bird or whatever. I don't know who it can come from. I've, I've no idea, Floyd, because, uh, I, as you know, I'm, 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 listen, there's three of us sitting here. No, no kidding yourself, Floyd. There's me, David, and John. Now, I can only speak for myself here, but I wasn't a, a well-educated man when it came to politics and all the rest of it. 
one thing I was always educated in was greyhounds because I, I wouldn't go to school. I wanted to do my dogs. And for to do my dogs, I'd, I felt as if I didn't need an education of a good gen because a greyhound will love you. You don't need to be, you, you don't need to know how to be a great speller or how to be a great mathematician for a greyhound to love you. If you love a greyhound, a greyhound will show his affection back to you. And that's what I, I was brought up with. That's the way I was brought up. And yeah. All, all, all I think I, you're very true in what you say there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All, all I was going to su suggest was, and again, I, I possibly have an advantage, not because I'm brighter than anybody else, but I've been, um, I don't know, near, near sort of ringside for such a long time now. Um, and I've seen the various organisations come and go. I was trying to work out how many different chairmen of different organisations and chief executives and managing directors. Um, and I, I kind of choose my words carefully. Um, I would say if Mark Bird walked away, this game is finished. Um, I don't think that... Um, he has all the answers in that he only has so much clout. Uh, I think you lads, I know John in particular has, had, has, has, you know, really been very impressed with the way Mark operates. I found him to be completely straight. All that you, the only issue has ever been that he's always got one arm tied behind his back because of the way the board is set up and the way the industry is financed and it isn't financed in a good way. Um, the, the promoters still control way too much and, and ultimately the promoters are, are the ones who have run the ship and if you say well we're running aground then you can only really be looking in one direction and and that's not being nasty or spiteful it, uh, it's you're not blaming all promoters because i know some of them have very little say in how anything operates they have very little clout um but ultimately um I think the GBGB has had a phenomenal year. If you look at what we've been through with COVID, if you look at how they got into government, if you look at what they've done with the bond scheme, you look at the way that the, the, the antis are now completely on the back foot. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. That, that, is, that is predominantly down to Mark Bird. Now, don't forget, when Mark Bird came into office, we had been promised from Tom Kelly that we were going to get a deal with the bookmakers. And it was yeah. two years and nothing happened. And he came in in his first year and did it. Now, some people are not going to like me saying this. I really don't give a damn. You know, I'm just telling it as I see it. And if people yeah. don't like it, they don't want they don't want any praise for anybody. <coughs> I've seen Mark operate. I think he's the straightest man in the industry. Um, it may come back, it, you know, he and I may have a big fallout. You may have a fallout with the industry. But from what I've seen so far... I'm yet to meet anybody, and I was talking to a promoter, very well-known promoter yesterday, um, about the job that has been done, the, particularly the job that has been done by Mark. And this particular promoter, very experienced and wise guy, had a large number of reservations about what's happened in the board and about the direction that the board has gone in certain areas. But they, they backed up basically what I was saying, that I think Mark is doing a good job. Uh, I think he has a good chairman. Again, people say to me, well, the chairman doesn't understand ground racing. Well, he doesn't have to. You can't have two people running an industry who both think they're the captain. But what you want is someone there who's steady and who stands by him. I think we have that. Um, without it, I think given some of the things that have happened this year, w this industry would have fallen apart. I mean, we, we had a we had our wobbles. I got myself into trouble with one promoter in particular when, when we got back racing again and this particular trainer kicked off, you know, typical, we haven't got any, we haven't got any open racing or we've got his graded racing and this, this particular promoter, I won't name, took great exception to that, has made my life quite difficult since. Um, however, without Mark being there to, to not necessarily jump to the promoter's tune, it could have gone, it could have gone horribly wrong. Whether or not he, he is given enough power to see the job through is my biggest concern because certainly, you know, you take on a, on, a, on a new commercial director, you have to give them the resources and you have to give them the clout to make it happen. That's clearly somebody's trying to see the way forward and you've got to take some of the power away from the race course promoters because at the moment they haven't done the right thing by us and, and we definitely need some, some, some forward thinking in that.
Just I would agree. I would agree with every word you've said there, Floyd. I mean, I've met Mark a few <laughs> times, and I've had great conversations with him. And I know, I know. Sometimes I can be a bit kind of. What would you say? I would try and bridge my way through it. You know what I mean? I would try and like bully my way through it, and and, and probably he he's a lot lot cleverer than me, and. Uh, that that wouldn't have worked in his situation, but whereas if, if I was in his job, I'd be trying to bully my way through it. But because I can see that's what's happening against them, it's more or less that you know what I mean. It's 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 they want their way, but I think there's got to be more power given down that side of it for him to make. Because some of the decisions he has made has been brilliant. And I think I would like to see him being given our, our no, I don't know about Mark, but I, I would like to see the owners and I'd like to see the trainers in this game being given a bit more, uh, what would be the word? A bit, a, 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 no, 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 not a cinema. A voice. Uh, yes, yes, there you go. See what I mean? I, I, I bet a voice there to say, listen, the owners to sit there and say, well, this is what we would like to see. We're the boys that's going out there. We're the boys that's going out there and buying dogs and we're keeping trainers in a job and we're keeping kennel hands in a job and we're keeping this industry going. So that makes them a stakeholder. Us as trainers... We're kept in the job because if we were owners and that, David, you know what I mean? And that that's what shows this industry up. And then you have, you've got the big bookmakers and all the rest of them coming in there. Now, I just think there needs to be more of you coming together, sitting around the table and, and, and represented, coming from all directions and saying, well, listen, and, and, and not just sitting there being childish and saying, Ha, we're not voting for that, we're not voting. Because this is what seems to be happening over the years and years and years. It's all I've ever heard about yeah. over the years that nobody could ever get anything put by. Well, that, this isn't the right thing, Floyd. No, there has no. to be, there no. has to be, it has to be more, more, more open because I'll no matter what the bookmakers say, I'll no matter what the promoters say, because I'm going to tell you something. There's more and more owners get out of this game than what's in it now. And I'm yeah. talking about big, serious owners that kept this game going. And if you keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, well, listen, Floyd, they're all going to take a walk. So I... that means the trainers are going to go. And, and listen, it's not just a matter of the trainers have lost their jobs and the, and, and, and the kennel hands have lost their job. Don't worry about it. We'll not be the biggest losers, OK? We will lose our jobs, but we won't be the biggest losers. The big bootmakers, your bet three six fives, your bet three and all the rest of it that's turning over the big bucks and putting very, very little, very little. And I don't care if they want to come and see Radmit there because I don't care. I know they're putting very little into this game. Not okay. what they should be putting. Right, let, me, in. Let, let me let me let me stop let me stop your mid run. Um I think you're right. I think there's a couple of points that I would clarify. And as I said, only, only not because I'm, I'm particularly wiser, but big, only because I've been there very close. I think a lot of the problems that the industry has are old problems. They are historic problems in terms of the structure yeah. of the industry. I also have very few doubts that um, going back to the managing director, um, I, you know, we, we've had a series of managing directors and, and CEOs, and I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get sued, but we've had a number of them whose only interest in, in occupying that seat has been to get a nice few quid out the game, um, to protect the promoters, and at the moment that any of them turned on the promoters, and it has happened, and they, they, they've been got rid of. Um, I mean, we had a particularly good chairman of, of um, the old BGRB in Lord Kimball. And because it didn't suit the promoters, what he was trying to do with the game, they got rid of him. So that, that's what happened. Now, in my view, and I could have this entirely wrong, but in my view, if Mark Bird cannot deliver what he wants to deliver, I think he'll go anyway. I think he, he is, has the integrity that goes, do you know what? I can't deliver what I'm trying to do. 
as one of the very first conversations I had with him a long time ago. I'm not going to details on it, but he, if I was very, very convinced that if he didn't think that he could achieve what he wants to achieve, then he'll go because some people would be sitting there going, oh yeah, well, he's on a nice few quid, there's a nice earner. I don't think that motivates the guy particularly. I, think I, don't, I don't think he needed the money anyway. No. I don't think, no. Matt never came across to me. Mark had a, a great job and all the rest of it, but let, let's not sit and think about what he's, he, he, he's trying to achieve because in my eyes, he's achieved, he's probably achieved 75% of what he's been wanting to do anyway as far as the welfare and all the rest of it, because what, what, what we see now, uh, Floyd, is a, a, a massive, massive, massive changes. Massive. Uh, I, I mean, with, with the retirement, the retirement of Greyhounds and all the rest of it, I mean, the aunties have just got everything, everything they've come up against, he, he's, he's sorted it, he's got us to do it, and he's, 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 this is the way, and he's drove us forward the way which has been brilliant. And we've all got behind them in that situation. But I do think that the, the, the other crowd need to get behind them too. It can't all just be coming from trainers, retirements and all the rest. It can't all just be one-sided. There has to be a commitment coming from the money people, the big bootmakings and all the rest. Of it. There has to be a bit of commitment coming from them. Yes, I, I, I agree. But again, if, if you look if you look at the structure, you look at how you get more money in, it's possible to get more money in, but you need other people to 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 give him the clout to, to do that. I'm not sure how easy it is because we've got ARC and SIS um, in, in commercial opposition. But ultimately, yes, you, you put a value on your product and then you drive it forward. Um, but so far, that hasn't really been the main priority of the race call for person. I'm talking about in history. I'm not talking about, I'm not looking to have a pop at any current promoters. I'm just talking about the way history has seen. And I've, and I've been at the start since 1987. So I have seen a fair bit of it. Um, but to do that, you have to give the guy the tools to do the job and say, right, well, we'll yeah. back you. You go out and get a deal on our behalf. Yeah. We will hand over the following things to you. To enable you to do the deal and if that doesn't happen then i don't think the industry will survive because we're not generating any new people we're not generating new punters you're looking at the average age of a greyhound punter god only knows what it is and unless we're able to do that unless that's driven by people like this commercial director given the resources to do the job we're not going anywhere in my view yeah anyway listen guys gentlemen I've, um, we could sit here and rant all evening. Uh, I think we've already been going about an hour and a quarter, which is pr probably far too long for many people. Certainly, um, Mr. McNair and myself have probably been hogging the situation because these Mullins boys are quite shy, sensitive flowers. I would have liked to have their side of that. I would have liked to have Big John's side of it. You'd have to pay John for every word. <laughs> I think Mark Bird is doing a brilliant job. Um, yeah. Can't fault him. But I do think that uh, what the industry, one works with the other. We can't work without each other. And yeah. um, I think the promoters need to realise that without us, there is no, there's no jobs. If we don't take dogs to them tracks, there's no tracks. Um, and we need to be uh, recognised for that. Yeah. And I David, think I'm not going to everyone... I'm not going to drag David into this because he works for a, a bookmaking company, and the last thing I want to do is is you know yeah, I, I, was, I wasn't planning to go down the, in any way any kind of political route with this. I don't think we're going to the usual route. Oh, no, I, I just think everyone needs to pull in the same direction. If we all yeah. work together, yeah, we've got a chance. If we keep pulling away from each other, you've got no chance. And and, and that, that that and that goes again to to finally having someone running the industry that I think people can can line up behind because we've never had it in my time in dogs. We've never had anybody before that I was prepared to line up behind. Um, I've always hated them and and not trusted them and you know, I've ultimately been proved right because if you look, it's a series of one disasters after another. Anyway, gentlemen. Our time is up. Thank you very much. I hope I'll get you all back. I did. I think I've done a remarkable feat to get John on in the first instance. Um, but, uh, he, only, he, only, he, only, he only come on because he knew I was coming on. I knew there'd be a foreigner on this. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs>
just uh, just oppose his visa when he applies for it, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Liz. Gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. See you later. Bye, Liz. Bye. 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 Bye.